Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Ehusani, and I have with me again in the studio Mr. Emeka Oji, a social entrepreneur and strategist who had worked for a number of years at the World Bank in Washington and in the Southeast. You are in Laos, Laos, right? Laos, yes. That's Vietnam. Uh, no, Laos PDR, People Democratic Republic of Laos. Oh, Republic of Laos. Mm. People Democratic Republic, oh, Republic of, Laos. of Laos. Yes. Mm. Uh, that must be one tiny little place, right? It is. Mm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's interesting. Mm. And then he was also the Assistant Country Director of the United States Africa Development Foundation, U.S. Uh, Africa Development Foundation. Then after that, he went into his own business. And he is the founder of Nest One incubation hub nest one incubation hub so what do you do as next one incubation hub we're primarily incubators what we do thank you for the welcome thank you First, very much uh, we're primarily incubator business incubators so we so we take okay, our slogan is where ideas come alive so we take um ideas of businesses from their step one and we take them to their step ten um oh not step five step ten <laughs> wow that's very ambitious um, we concentrate in um, three sectors. One is um, agriculture and food. Two is um, art and culture. And, and two, art and culture. Three, technology. And we chose those um, primarily because um, you need to choose something you have a competitive and a comparative advantage in as you want to attack the world. Because our goal as a hub is to create businesses that attack the world, businesses that attack the world market. So for instance, we want to make foods and agro products that would go to shelves on Walmart, go to shelves in Tesco, go to shelves in Carrefour in France, and compete favorably with the products that are already there from those particular countries. We want, we want a 14-year-old boy in a village in Arkansas, in those United States, we want a 14-year-old boy. It's his birthday. His father asks him, what do you want to do on your birthday? Nigerian. And he says he wants to go to BAFA Foods. And BAFA Foods is serving Nigerian foods. And that's where he comes with his family. Um, we want to achieve that. For instance, BAFA is one of our incubators. It's BAFA Foods. BAFA is... Um, by Africa for Africa, that's what it stands for. Um, and the goal of BAFA is to have 1,000 outlets in Europe and 1,000 outlets in America in 10 years. So BAFA Foods is part of your outfit? No, it's one of our incubatees. Remember, we incubate yes. businesses. So this is a business we are currently incubating. And the goal is to have 1,000 outlets in Europe and 1,000 outlets in America in 10 years. Um, uh, Mike, I hope you are hearing about incubation. This guy is ready to incubate your business idea, Mike. Uh, <laughs> that is to say, you know the way uh, uh, the mother hen incubates the egg and sees the egg hatch and become chicks, right? Mm -hmm. So, from my understanding, uh, your incubation hub is that Mike brings his idea about um, uh, setting up uh, vegetable and uh, you know production uh, units. We, he farms um, techno farming, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where he has greenhouses and so on and so forth. And then he comes to you. He's still at stage one, mm -hmm. right? And you incubate. We help him go to stage ten. Once, you help him get to stage ten. Mike, he, are you hearing? Once he meets our criteria. Great. Yes. Mm. So, uh, um, um, so, so that one. Um, we 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 believe, yeah. We believe that enterprise and innovation is the way forward as a country. Let me put this in perspective. Our budget this year, circa thirty billion dollars. That's our highest budget ever as a nation. Thirty billion US dollars, and so that's the entire money that. One federal government, 37 state governments, or, or 36 are state governments, on. 700 and some four local government areas, 300 and something House of Rest members, 100 and something senators. That's the money they're all struggling to share. Let me use the term share. Excuse me, guys. Share. They're struggling to share $30 billion. Excuse me. $30 billion is the same amount of money that one company called Walmart made on a day called Black Friday. One day, in the space of 24 hours. 
30 million dollars yes one company yes the money that all these characters are gathering uh, themselves uh, to share the money that we're all crying about uh, give me my own share it's 30 billion dollars it's the same amount of money that one company in America, Walmart, made in the space of 24 hours. So we can't even be talking about. In a day about, called Black Friday. We can't even be talking about what California's budget is. No, 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 no. We're dropping the ocean. So Brazil, mm -hmm. Brazil makes, Brazil makes over 80 billion dollars a year from sugarcane, that edible grass. Sugarcane. That edible grass called sugarcane. 80 billion dollars. China makes more money from pork, pork, than our entire national budget. That's gather all our crude oil for two years, sell everything. In one year, China will make more money from pork. From pork, you know. One year. Than we have made from crude oil in two years. Excuse me, but crude oil is not the way forward, especially for a country like Nigeria. We have 200 million people. 200 million people with ideas stored in between their ears. Those ideas need to be released. That's where we're coming. We want to release those ideas. Yes. Now, before where you come in, that's talking about scale now. Mm -hmm. That all we are struggling about in this country, this is my share, this is your share, this is derivation, this is not derivation. All we're talking about with the current budget is $30 billion. That's it. And that's just one company one day made that Alibaba made the uh, thirty-nine million dollars, thirty-nine billion dollars, on a day called Cyber Monday last year. So, it means that we are like children struggling over crumbs and fighting over it and killing ourselves over crumbs. Whereas, the bread is somewhere there. The bread is somewhere there, mm. which they have refused. And to. we call it national cake, but we have no concept of what cake is. The national cake we should be baking is a cake that gathers our ideas and turns them into something. I'm talking about crude oil as national cake. Excuse me? Crude oil? Crude oil that is the lifespan. Crude I mean, oil. in 15 years, it's gone. <laughs> crude oil. Uh, Father, we're not thinking right. So, no. tell me about it. That um, ideas that your, your motto where ideas come alive where ideas come alive yes so strategically thinking it is now to welcome these ideas from these upstarters people mm -hmm. who are just starting mm -hmm. take their ideas help them incubate these ideas mm -hmm. with technology mm -hmm. with innovation mm -hmm. whatever now help them to create something large out of it to scale it up yes. to polish it mm -hmm. Uh, I remember that uh, when Nigerians began to produce some of these little, little things, the challenge was that the finishing, mm -hmm. the packaging, mm -hmm. the efficiency in the manner in which it is delivered, mm -hmm. the end product is not nice enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we go to Nigerian homes. Around Abuja here, we have some of the finest granite. Absolutely. Some of the finest from here stretching to Kogi, from here to Lovely. Kogi, from here to Benue, and so on, mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. And yet, Nigerians are still importing tiles, granite tiles, from Italy and from other places. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. simply because of the packaging, of the mm -hmm. manner you finish it. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that your enterprise is able to help up startups to startups, startups? Okay, not off starter, but mm. startup. Mm. <laughs> to help them to become more efficient, finish their product better, um, package, help them package their product in such a way that in, that's, uh, in Walmart, uh, in um, Tesco in the UK, in Walmart in the US, this product will be displayed like product from France and Germany. Yes, let's take for instance. Let's take for instance, let me use an example to answer your question. So let's take for instance, you want to do um, pound yam. You want to do pound yam. So you need to go through the whole process. You need to go and uh, organize your supply chain. Then you need to go set up a factory. Then you need to certify your factory. That's uh, NAVDAC doing that, certify your factory and your products. Then you need to produce. Then you need to package. Then you need to now have meetings with stores so that 
your goods can be placed on 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 their shelves. We we'll take care of all that whole process oh, for you, you. You help them to take care of all that. Process. Yeah, we can do all that for you. That's I'm just using agro as yes. an example. Agro processing. We we'll take care of that whole process for you from beginning to the end, either for fee or, or for some equity in your business. But of course, we have to believe in your business. And we have to believe in you, the entrepreneur, that you're willing to sit, by, to stand by your business and do what it takes to get that business off the ground. So you want to put your products on Walmart shelves, or on Tesco shelves. Yes, we may need to backward integrate. We may need to go back to our farming practices, to our land. So that may take a little bit more time because we may need to get the right land and deploy the right farming practices so that we don't fall short or, of... Um, so th th <coughs> those are still part of what you help them to do, yes, part of the incubation. Absolutely. What we offer basically is economies of learning and economies of scale. That's what we offer. So economies of learning. So instead of you going it by yourself and making the mistakes that everybody will make, and uh, we've made all the mistakes, we, we have, have the knowledge, we have learned. so we deliver it. Then economies of scale. Why have a factory that is redundant 90% of the time because you have to own a factory or even 10% of the time because you have to own a factory. We have our factories. You come, you use our machines to produce. Economic of scale. Yes. Uh, uh, um, our factories are already certified. So, so it's then easier for you to get your NAVDAC certification because it's being produced in the factory that's already certified as a hub. You know. So um, that's just agro. So for other things, like, okay, so let's take technology. There's, in technology, there's technology invention, there's technology innovation. Technology invention is when you are developing new technologies. I'm not very sure we can compete there at the moment. Technology innovation is where you're taking existing technology and modifying it to solve existing social problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can play there. So when I say technology, that's what we are concentrating on deploying existing technologies to solve existing social problems. I shared with you what I'm doing with one of them, which I call, um, uh, oh, I have so many I'm doing, and, and so the names escape me at times. Um, True Color. No, True Villa. True Color is the phone one. Mm -hmm. True Villa. True Villa basically is a system that allows um, the diaspora who wants to get something done in Nigeria to get it done. And this is all technology driven, or mostly technology driven. But it is, yes, 100% technology enabled. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, there's a basic problem now in Nigeria. Uh, they say they, sp they send about $20 billion a year into Nigeria. It's probably much more than that, but that's what has been captured. Um, at least. A third of that money is misappropriated and misapplied. By friends and relations. Because it's friends and relations that are misappropriating and misapplying them, you don't hear the news. It's swept under the carpet after a family meeting. Is your brother. What do you want to do? You go kill him. And everybody lets it go. But he's just misappropriated $100,000. That was meant for use to build a house for somebody abroad. Now we want to make sure that those kind of things don't happen. So for a little service fee, we connect you to a builder, we slap on insurance so that if anything happens, you don't, um, you don't lose your money, you get your money so back. We slap on uh, supervision, we snap on your brother can still come and be supervised, no problem. If you want to pay him separately, pay him separately. You know, but we're so, creating so, this so, electronic so, so platform here, too. So here, yeah. once again, we have um, inefficiency creating opportunities. Absolutely. So there is the inefficiency of diasporans sending money to their brothers to build houses mm -hmm. and consistently getting disappointed, mm -hmm. getting betrayed, money getting lost, mm -hmm. buildings delivered shabbily, mm -hmm. and so on, no building delivered at all. Mm -hmm. That's a story that has been with us for ages. Mm -hmm. And building now, is just one of them. Yeah, building well, is just one of them. There are 20 more different uh -huh. things. So you, you, done, cr you then see an opportunity there yeah. to create something that will take this burden of loss from the diasporans. To give them peace of mind. To give them peace of mind. We are selling peace of mind. That's what we are selling. So, so they can remain in the comfort of their homes mm -hmm. and be seeing their project. Going on. Going on. Mm -hmm. And be inspecting. Mm -hmm. And be contributing to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Using technology. Deploying technology. Deploying technology. Exactly. Good. So mm -hmm. for me, this, this is exciting that um, the approach I see you are taking, the approach I see you are taking is 
rather than continue to bemoan mm. and lament our sorry situation, mm. you are challenging all of us mm. to look into the deplorable situation, into the inefficiency, the particular incident of inefficiency, and say, where is the opportunity here? What is this terrible situation calling me to do? After all, we have brains. Many of us have gone to school. Mm -hmm. Our education should equip us to solve problems. Mm -hmm. Human beings do not just adapt. Human beings change their environment. They, they change their environment. The reasonable man adapts himself to society. Yes. The unreasonable reasonable man, man seeks to adapt society, society to himself. Yes. So, Therefore, all progress is due to the unreasonable man. Yes, I saw that in your text. Yes, George Bernard Shaw. Yes. Mm. So, all progress is due to the unreasonable man. Yes. The reasonable person, which is the average person, he just adapts mm. to yeah. the situation. Somebody else says, No. Why is this like Why this? Why is this like Why this? Why can't it be like this? And back to the few people we are talking about, mm. the five percent of people mm. we are talking about, mm. uh, who will, who will, who will be unreasonable, and who will challenge the status quo? The status quo. Mm. But those people who can challenge the status quo, many of them in this country were crushed right from time of slavery. I hope you know slave trade. Mm -hmm. right? mm. The people who could challenge the king, the people who could say no. To the uh, to the Emir, to mm. the uh, to the uh, Ubi, to the Oba, to, they were often the ones that were gathered and sent into slavery. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing you have to you have to do st strategic opposition, strategic planning. In yes. the opposition. You don't go and uh, you don't go and challenge the Emir or the Oba or the king, as you said. You know, I asked people. I said, do they think that any government policy could have stopped Chimamanda? from becoming the Chimamanda we know today. What government policy, maybe apart from withdrawal of his passport, could have stopped John Michel Obi from becoming John Michel Obi. And John Michel Obi has made money, and he's helping his community. Chimamanda has made money, she's helping her community. So there are areas that kings don't control. There are areas that robbers or emirs or government, they don't control. Mm. If I make um, if I make something that I can sell to hundred million Nigerians that competes in price to something that is currently imported, the only thing they can do, if they are so against me, the only thing they can do is to come and shut my factory, right? But why would they want to shut it? It's not as if they are getting anything from shutting it. Once I'm meeting all the basic regulations, I should be fine. So, but there are areas that you step into mm -hmm. that you require licensing from government. So, for instance, you spoke to me about uh, an acquaintance of yours who sought a mining license for over 10 years. Uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. I don't know what to say to that one because government has now stepped in. And government has now decided in its own wisdom or in its own foolishness Government has decided that it's going to take more than 10 years to issue a license that can be issued in two weeks. Um, I don't know. Those are, these are all the things that I think should push us to the edge. And then we turn around and say, who is in that government, Seth? Can we, uh, can we elect somebody so, else? So if you cannot change the conduct of the person in government, you can change the government and put the person whose conduct will be as we... You know, respect. That, that is the idea of democracy. That is the idea of democracy. And um, hopefully we will get there. No, hopefully no, no. I, I, like I said, um, as Nigeria celebrates 60 years of uh, independence, mm. uh, I think it is a good time for us to be discussing this. Mm. To be discussing not just our losses, not just uh, lamenting our missed opportunities, mm -hmm. but what opportunities are still there. Mm -hmm. Currently exist. Currently existing, mm -hmm. even in the Within serious crisis that we are in, mm -hmm. that there are new opportunities. Not even even in, because of. Oh. <laughs> Not because in of. spite of, <laughs> but precisely because, because of, of yes. the crisis, mm -hmm. there are new opportunities Absolutely. that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And that, and that um, I keep saying, we went to school. 
We went to school, and my own problem is some of the issues you are bringing out now. People who went to school and did engineering, various areas of engineering, mm. business administration, and various specializations in that. What kind of things are we learning? What about innovation? So that um, perhaps there are too few people who are thinking this way to say, look, yeah, this situation is bad. Oh, this local government, there is no governance. There. In that terrible situation, what are the opportunities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there will always be. Don't don't we say in conventional wisdom that when one door closes, another opens. Others, mm -hmm. other doors open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has been there. We have always been saying so. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what you are saying now is that as the doors of good governance close in Nigeria, mm -hmm. as the doors of proper security arrangements close, new doors are opening. Yes, new doors are opening, and it only takes us to sit down to reflect, mm -hmm. to look again. To, look to step into those new doors. We need to look again, we need to see again, then we step into those doors. Mm. I mean, this, this for me is very exciting, and it's a, I, I like it as we are you know, celebrating independence that uh, there's something positive. Mm. God cannot put us in such a beautiful country mm -hmm. and a large whatever. Okay, we keep complaining about our diversity. Oh, British people brought us for their own selfish reasons, brought all these disparate human beings that are from different planets and put us in this place. Now, in that diverse environment, are there opportunities? Of course there are. The very, the very concept of the nation that a lot of us believe to be the greatest nation on earth today, the very concept of the nation is built on diversity. diversity. So diversity it's supposed to be a source of wealth. By practical demonstration, which we're looking at, mm -hmm. it's not a minus. It's not a minus. It is us that have chosen to make our own a minus. It is us that have chosen to ignore the opportunities presented by the diversity. Exactly. It is us that have chosen to ignore the, um, the, the richness, mm -hmm. the wealth mm -hmm. that comes from diversity exactly. that we have. Exactly. Uh -huh. And only look at the challenges. Only look at the, um, the problems that come along with diversity, mm. which we need to sort out with dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, you, you are going into dialogue. What it means is that you equip yourself to get the best you can get mm -hmm. and give, you know, you give some, you, mm -hmm. you, you get some. Yeah, take some, give some. You mm -hmm. take, take some and give some. Mm -hmm. That's what dialogue is about. Mm -hmm. But we just keep complaining. Mm -hmm. We just keep complaining. How do we stop, I mean, and we may end on this note, how do we stop Nigerians from being perpetual complainers to being innovators, making something out of every bad crisis situation, making something possible. How do we do that? It's a difficult thing. It's a very difficult thing because if it wasn't difficult, it would have been done a long time ago. So it's a very difficult thing. But there are steps that um, we are taking at Next One. Um, one of them, for instance, is we're about to start a national competition where um, we're asking people to send in videos and clips of what good they have seen in their environment about Nigeria and in their prizes at the end of the day. So basically, you are forcing somebody in Potekot or somebody in Kaura Namoda or somebody in Ife, a 15-year-old child, you are forcing the person to take a second look at the same and environment they have been looking at. That has been complaining about. Yes, and find something positive because he wants to earn your prize. But what then happens is that, as he does that once... What, what he has taken note of remains with him. Yes, that's one. But it also becomes a new habit. To do it again. Yes, by the time he does it once, twice, three times, it becomes a part of him. Do it long enough, it becomes a part of him. So then he begins to... So he then comes out and he's approaching the situation by looking for positive uh, um, signals. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing. There are a few other things. Um, but perhaps I should save them for another yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Invite me again. Yes, <laughs> they, of course I will invite you again. I mean, when you think about expatriates, Germans and British uh, people mm -hmm. and French and Americans that come to this country, mm -hmm. I have a story about how a number of them, after three years service here, it's, time for, them, it's time for them to go. They are crying. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Refuse and if they can actually change job and remain here, they want to remain here. Love Why? Because they have seen some opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have seen something very good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that perhaps they don't have in their country mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they are seen here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the, the roads are rough, uh, they no good infrastructure, no good, no electricity, no this. Mm. And yet, mm. the person coming from so-called first world mm. that has spent three years here mm. does not want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every single, every single I mean, ban on every single thing that you call bad, horrible in Nigeria is an opportunity. Every, every single, single thing that you call Nigeria. bad yes. is an opportunity. You don't have pipe on water in your town. Your it's village. an opportunity. It's an opportunity. You don't have electricity. Yeah. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. I mean, I, I told you how we operate on uh, the 100% solar. Solar, yeah. uh, yes. And then, yes, so all that people cry about, uh, 11, how many, uh, nine years ago, mm -hmm. we sorted that out. Mm -hmm. It was an opportunity to look into alternative energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And perhaps over time now, you have discovered that it is more reliable and cheaper for you. Yes. So you have gained in the long run. Yes. You have also become a, an example to others who would come and see what you're doing and say to themselves, oh, we, we too can, can do we it. We too can do it. We too can do it. And On this note, we'll bring this segment to an end. I've been speaking with Emeka Oji, uh, a social entrepreneur and strategist who is talking about incubating enterprises and businesses to help them to move from first level to 10th level. To 10th level. <laughs> I mean, congratulations. And uh, we will come uh, back to the studio uh, sometime to keep discussing this kind of matters. I am very happy that we have ended this discussion on a very positive note, especially as we mark our independence. Every negative thing happening in this country has opportunities in them. Yes. So uh, may we, who mark the 60th anniversary of Nigeria today, may we begin to see the good things in this country in spite of all the woes. May we stop lamenting and begin to look at what opportunities there are in our uh, circumstances in Nigeria. Amen. God bless you. And thank you for coming. Thank you, sir.